Live from Austin, Texas, it's The Cube. Covering South by Southwest 2017. Brought to you by Intel. Now, here's John Furrier. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Austin, Texas for South by Southwest Cube coverage at the Intel AI Lounge, hashtag Intel AI, if you're watching, put it out on Twitter. I'm John Furrier, SiliconANGLE the Cube. Our next guest, Alvin Yu, who's with Cloudera. And uh, there's, in the news today, when, although they won't comment on it, great to see you, social media manager, Cloudera. Yeah. Yes, nice to see you as well. Great to see you. So Cloudera has a, a strategic relationship with Intel. You guys have a strategic investment, Intel, and you guys partner up, so it's well known in the industry. But what's going on here is interesting. AI for social good is our theme. Cloudera has always been a pay it forward company. I've known the founders, Mike Olson uh, and Amr Awadala, yep. um, really all about the community and paying it forward. So, Allison, talk about what you guys are doing working on, because you're involved in a panel, but also Cloudera Cares, and you guys have teamed up with, with um, uh, Thorm, doing some interesting things. Yes. Take it away. Sure, thanks. Um, thanks for the great intro. So, I'll give you a little bit of a brief um, introduction to Cloudera Cares. Cloudera Cares was founded Roughly about three years ago, it was really a employee-driven and led effort. Um, I kind of stepped into the role, ended up being a little bit more of the leader just by the way it worked out. Um, so we've really gone from going from, you know, we're just doing soup kitchens and everything else to strategic, strategic partnerships, donating software, professional service hours, things along those lines, um, which has been very exciting to see our nonprofit partnerships grow in that way. So. You know, it really went from almost grassroots efforts to an organized organization now. Um, and we started stepping up our strategic partnerships about a year and a half ago. We started with Datakind as our initial one. Um, about two years ago, we, we initiated that. Then we, um, a year ago, about in September, we finalized our donation of an enterprise data hub to Thorn, which if you're not aware of, they're all about stopping um, using technology, and innovation to stop child trafficking. So yep. last year around September or so, we announced the partnership or, and we donated professional service hours. And then in October, we went with them to Grace Hopper, which is obviously the largest women in tech conference yep. um, in North America. And we hosted a um, hackathon and we helped mentor women entering into yep. the tech workforce and trying yep. to come up with some really cool innovative solutions for them to track and see what's going on with um, with the dark web. So we had quite a few interesting ideas coming awesome. out of that. Also we had Frederic, uh, Fra Frederico Gomez Suarez on, who was the technical advisor. Yeah. A Microsoft employee, but he's volunteering at Thorn. And this is interesting, because this is not just donating to the soup kitchens and whatnot. Yeah. You're starting to see a community approach to philanthropy that's coding oriented. Yeah. Hackathons turning into community, galvanizing communities, and actually taking to the next level. Yeah, so I think one of the things we realize is tech, while it's so great, we have actually introduced a lot of new problems. So, I don't know if everyone's aware, but in the 80s and 90s, um, child exploitation had almost completely died. They had almost resolved the issue. Um, with the introduction of technology and the internet, it opened up a lot more ways for people to go ahead and you know exploit children, arrange things um, in the dark web. So, we're trying to figure out a way to use technology to combat a problem that technology kind of created as well, um, but not only solving it, but you know, rescuing people. It's a classic so. security problem. The surface yeah. area has increased for this kind of thing, but big data, which is where you guys were founded on in the cloud era that we live in, yep. pun intended, um, <laughs> using the machine learning now, you start, there's some scale now involved. Yes, exactly, and that's what we're really hoping. So, we're partnering with Intel and the National Center of Missing and Exploited Children. Um, we're actually kicking off a virtual hackathon tomorrow, um, and our hope is we can figure out some different innovative ways that AR can be applied to scraping data, um, you know, and finding children. You know, a lot of times we'll see, there's not a lot of clues, but for example, if we can upload if there can be a tool that can upload you know, three or four different angles of a child's face when they go missing, maybe what happens is someone posts a picture on Instagram or Twitter yeah. that has a geotag and this kid is in the background. That would be an amazing way of using yeah. AI and machine learning to find a child, right? Well, I'll give you guys a plug for Cloudera. We, um, and, and, and I'll reference Naveen, Dr. Naveen Rao, 
um, who's the GM of Intel's AI group, was on earlier, and he was talking about how there's a lot of storage available, not a lot of compute. Now, Cloudera, you guys have really pioneered the data lake, data hub concept where storage is critical. Yeah. Now you've got this compute power and machine learning. That's kind of where it comes together. Is that, did I get that right? Yeah, and I think it's great that with the partnership with Intel, we're able to integrate you know, our technology directly into the hardware, which makes it so much more efficient. You're able to compute massive amounts of data um, in a very short amount of time and really come up with real results. And, and with this partnership, specifically with Thorne and NACMEC, we're seeing that you know, it's, it's real impact um, for as thousands of people last year, I think, in the 2016 impact report, Thorne said they had identified over 6,000 trafficking victims, of which over 2,000 were children, right? So that, that tool that they used is actually built on Cladera. So it's yeah. great seeing you know, our technology put into, yeah. into place. That's awesome. I was talking to an Intel person the other day. They have 72 cores now on a processor, <laughs> on the high-end Xeons. Let's get down to some other things that you're working on. What are you doing here at the show? Do you have things that you're doing? Do you have a panel? Yeah, so at the show um, at South by Southwest, um, we're kicking off a virtual hackathon tomorrow at our Austin offices um, for South by Southwest. Everyone's welcome to come. Um, I just did the liquor order, so yes, <laughs> everyone please come. And you just came from Austin's office, so you were just coming there. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we've Unlimited Red Bull, <laughs> pizza, food. We'll, we'll be doing lots and lots tomorrow, but we're kicking that off. We have um, representatives from Thorne, NECMEC, Google, Intel, all on site to answer questions. You know, That's kind of our kickoff of this month-long virtual hackathon. You don't need to be in Austin to participate, um, but that is one of the things that we are kicking off. Yeah. And then on Sunday, actually here at the Intel AI Lounge, we're doing a panel on AI for good and, and using um, artificial intelligence to solve problems, right? So. And we'll be broadcasting that live here on theCUBE, so folks, SiliconANGLE.TV will carry that. Allison, talk about the trend that we were, you weren't here, but we were talking about how there's now a new counterculture developing in a good way around community and social change. How real is the trend that you start to see these hackathons evolve from what used to be recruiting sessions to just people just jamming together to, to meet each other. Now you're starting to see the next level of formation where people are organizing collectively yeah. to impact real issues. Is yeah. this a real trend or, or where is that trend? Can you speak to that? Sure, so I mean, from what I've seen from the hackathons, what we've been seeing before was it's very company specific, only one company wanted to do it, um, and they would kind of silo themselves, right? Now we're kind of seeing this, this coming together of you know, companies that are generally competitors, but yeah. they see a great social cause and they decide that they want to band together, regardless of their differences in technology, product, et cetera, for a common good, and so. Like Thorn. For Thorn, um, you'll see a lot of competitors. So you see Facebook and Twitter, or Google and Amazon, right? And yeah. we'll see all these different competitors come together, lend their workforce to us, and have them code for one great project. Um, so you see it as a real trend? I do see it as a trend. I, I saw Thorne last year did a great one with Facebook, and on-site with Facebook. This year, um, as we started to introduce this hackathon, we decided that we wanted to do a hackathon series versus just a one-off hackathon. So we're seeing people being able to share code, contribute, work on top of other code, right? And, and it's very much a sharing community. So we're very excited for that. All right, so I've got to ask you, what's the culture like at Cloudera these days as you guys prepare to go public? Uh, what's the vibe internally in the company? Obviously Mike Olson, the founder, still around, Amr's around. You guys have been growing really fast. Got your new space. What's the vibe like in Cloudera now? You know, honestly, the, the culture of Cloudera hasn't really changed. So when I joined three years ago, we were much smaller than we are now. Um, but I think one thing that, that we're really excited about is, you know, everyone still is so collaborative and everyone makes yeah. sure to help one another out. So yeah. um, I think our common goal is really more along the lines of we're one team and let's, you Great. know, put out the best product we can. Awesome. So. so what's South by Southwest mean to you this year? If you had to kind of like zoom out and say, okay, what's the theme? We heard Robert Scoble earlier say it's a VR theme. We're here with Intel with AI. So there's a plethora of different kind of touch points here. What do you see? Yeah, so I actually went to the opening keynote this morning, which was great. Um, there was an introduction, and then, I don't know if you realize, but Cory Booker was on as well, which is great. Yep. Um, but I think a lot of what we had seen was, they called out on stage that artificial intelligence is something that 
will be a trend for the next year, and I think that's very exciting that Intel really yep. hit the nail on the head with the AI lounge, right? So. Corey Booker, a big fan, he's from my neighborhood, went yeah. to the same school I went to, but my family, you know, so yeah. in Northern Valley, Old Japan, Corey, if you're watching, retweet us, hashtag Intel AI. Yeah. Um, so AI's there, AI no doubt, it's on stage. There. Yes, um, but I think we're also seeing a very large um, just community around how can we make our community better versus let's try to go in all these different silos and just be hyper aware of what's only in, in front of us, right? So we're seeing a lot more um, from the community as well, just being interested in things that are not immediately in front of us, the, the wider, you know, either nation, global, et cetera. So I think that's very exciting. People are a little stepping out of, you know, just yeah. their own little bubbles, right? And, and looking and, and having more compassion for other people and figuring out how they can give back. And so. of course, open source at the center of all the innovation, as always. <laughs> I would like to think so, <laughs> it right? It is. So. I would testify. Machine learning is yes. just a great example how that's now going up into the cloud, where you start to see that really being part of all the apps coming out, which is great because you guys are in the big data business. Yeah. Okay, Allison, thanks so much for taking the time. Real quick plug for uh, your panel on Sunday here. Yep. What are you going to talk about? So we're going to be talking a lot about um, AI for good. Um, we're really going to be talking about the NECMEC, Thorn, Google, Intel, Cloudera partnership, um, how we've been doing able to do that, and a lot of what we're going to also concentrate on is how the everyday tech worker can really get involved um, and give back and contribute. I think there's generally a misconception of if there's not a program at my company, how do I give back? Um, yeah. And I think Clutter is a shining example of how a few employees can really enact a lot of change. Um, we went from grassroots, just yeah. a few employees, to a global program pretty yeah. quickly. So. And that's organically growing, which is the formula for success, versus some sort of structured company program. You exactly. Know? <laughs> so, I mean, we, we've definitely gone from yeah. soup kitchen to strategic partnerships and being able to donate you know, our own time, our engineers' times, and um, obviously our software. So. Thanks for taking the time to come on our cube. Getting, getting crowded in here. It's rocking, the house is rocking here at the Intel AI Lounge. If you're watching, check out the hashtag, Intel AI or South by Southwest. I'm John Furrier, we'll be back with more after this short break. <laughs>